Yeah, my favourite places of seeing them was often really small, dark, intense places. So you sort of like walk into a space and just be hit with those like sharp sounds of like Cody's voice just like barking at you. Just before dudes go mental in a tiny room. Ooh, what the fuck? You know? The most music I've ever experienced in one little moment. kind of almost addictive. I remember the music sounding incredibly abrasive. At the start I wasn't sure where, how I felt about it, but then they'd go into these beautiful pop melodies, but then they'd come out of them again really abrasively and do something like really dissonant and it would make you feel weird again. I think they were ahead of the times. <laughs> Maybe they had the internet before everyone else did or something. <laughs> Well, they were just doing something that no one else was doing and it's with the level of conviction and ability that you couldn't help but be excited about it and want to go and see it. Cody scaled a speaker's deck 10 metres high. They were terrifying to watch. Ruben climbing the speaker's deck with his guitar, playing his guitar. I don't know if the speaker's deck is tied down. I don't think Ruben cares. Like insane. I mean, standing on top of it, singing, it was wobbling in the wind, and it was definitely, if you fell, you'd die. Is this like a sort of self-destructive statement that he's making, or also I sort of thought maybe they know exactly what they're doing, and they practice climbing speaker stands, because they were really good at it. And Cody, is, you were always trying to get to his level, and like, what's this guy on about? Because he looked like he was on speed the whole time. He's got these eyes <laughs> that are quite piercing. He'll look at you, and you'll be like, oh gosh, he's coming for me. It was like they were really quite keen to create their own world. And people like us got sucked right into it. It's a really unique way of pulling you in, and performers have to do it. But some of them are trying to bring you into their world, but I think he's in your world and he's the master of it in that particular moment. And he's completely enslaved your attention. Ruben's guitar is always just super gnarly, like it sounded like a chainsaw. He is a monster on the guitar, it feels like He's cranked everything to 100% so that it's as uncontrollable as he could possibly make it and he's struggling desperately to control this huge force that he's got behind him. And it feels like he's just got to barely touch the strings and chaos will erupt from his amplifier. Oh, there's Minchik's myth there. Oh, no. like, um... Wasn't that one where he, they got in a real big fight? I remember going to the show as well and Ruben had to sing and play. I just heard they did a show where Ruben sang and they were all, everyone was yelling between state, between songs like, where's Cody, where's Cody? Cody was actually at the show in a wig. And apparently he was standing there with a hat on and a fake beard <laughs> and like sunglasses <laughs> watching the show. I don't know if that's true. I think he might have even got on stage and stage dived. He was definitely there in a wig. I saw him there because he was hanging out with this dude from Oriwa. <laughs> I mean, even at their last show, when Cody was throwing things around and the others were trying to hold it together, you still thought, can they really be this talented and write songs that are this good, but be so dysfunctional? It wasn't until, like, Cody and Ruben are actually in a fist fight that you think, oh, maybe this is genuinely that dysfunctional. They are genuinely falling apart. That kind of felt like he was just legitimately fucked up and just wanted to ruin everything and, like, he lost his temper or whatever. But then, like, some more time went by and I looked back at it, I was like, okay, well, that was the last show. No one's going to remember a last show if nothing happened. 